to Jai Long and this is Make Your Break. Whether you're a big-hearted creative or an aspiring entrepreneur, let's take action on your dreams. Reconnecting you with your why and giving you the how. I'm here to dish out actionable mindset tips and fun industry secrets to help you blow up your biz. From eye-opening reality checks to motivational gold, no two episodes are ever the same. So tune in weekly, skip the FOMO, and let's dive into the deep together. Hey, welcome back to the show. And if you're new to the show, which I know a lot of people are, my name is Jai Long. I am a business coach. I'm a wedding photographer. I'm a property developer. I do so many different things. I have a clothing label, but mostly right now I do coaching for wedding photographers. So my six-figure business map, which is my online coaching program, actually opens up this week. I'm really, really excited about it. We also have a marketing workshop, a three-day marketing workshop happening as well, and it's only $9. So it's 90 minutes per day. It's only a small commitment, but it's only $9, and you can find that at jialong.co forward slash marketing. Welcome to the show. I am so excited. The reason why I'm giving an intro to all the people that have been listening is because we're getting so many new subscribers to the channel and it's all thanks to you for actually sharing the podcast and believing in other people and their success, the other creative entrepreneurs around you and sharing the love. So I love seeing the podcast out in the world, shared on Instagram, shared Facebook and groups all over the place. And thanks to you, we're getting the good word out there. Now, I've been running this podcast for like, I think, two and a half years now, which has been so crazy. And we're in 2022. Things are heating up. I'm feeling optimistic about having the biggest year that I've ever had because I'm creating plans. We're doing big things. And um, this week is just going to be madness because when you open up the business map, we limit tickets to 300 tickets. So 300 enrollments can actually join and um, we get to say hi to all the new sailors, all the people that are ambitious and they're crazy and they're ready to go for their dreams and they're not going to let anything stop them. So today's podcast episode is with Steph and Elliot. Now, Steph Fazy, you probably remember her. She was on the podcast a bit over a year ago now episode 60, if you want to go back, where she just started as a wedding photographer and she was just scaling up. Today, her partner is also working in the business. They're working together in the business full time, which is really cool. They've scaled past $100,000 and they're currently making a lot more than that. They've been in the business map for quite a long time now and they've been hitting leaps and bounds and so many people want to get them back on the podcast to see how they're doing and how Steph's doing because uh, last time she's just larger than life and so many people listen to that podcast episode. It, it had crazy amounts of downloads. So it's good to have them back. Now, today we talk about branding and we talk about creating a brand to stand out because I wanted to make sure that, you know, this last month I've been talking about marketing and things like that. But, you know, if we don't have a standout brand, you can push all the marketing you want to your brand. And if it doesn't create trust, if it doesn't create desire, if it doesn't create a connection, then it's really hard to convert all that marketing that you've done. So very important. And I wanted to make sure that I'm talking about this today with these guys because they are only in second year business. And I know a lot of people are going to relate to them and exactly where they're at and the journey on how they got here and grown so quickly, blew up their business so quickly. So before we get into the episode, don't forget, once again, the Six Figure Business Map is open for enrollment just for a few days this week. If you want to find out more, just head over to my website, jialong.co, or if you want to join me on the marketing workshop, again, just go to jialong.co and you'll see a link there as well. Other than that, let's get into the interview. Hey, I'm here with Elliot and Steph. You guys would have heard from these guys probably a little bit over a year ago now, maybe. They first debuted on the podcast, Make Your Break, and they were just starting out. And since then, they've done a lot of things. So they've rebranded, they've built a new website. Elliot's actually quit his job and he's, he's working full-time in there as well. And they were part of the business map for been there for a long time and so many different things. So I can't wait to dive in and have a chat. So I'm actually going to talk to him about 
building a brand that stands out today. And I know a lot of you guys are really excited. I have actually got another tab open here with the Discord group, and I'm asking people in the business map, what questions should I ask you guys as well, if you didn't know? And we're getting some cool questions coming through. So welcome, guys. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for having us back on yeah, again. Definitely excited. I'm definitely, um, I've had a lot of messages to get you guys back on to follow up from the last episode. Yes. It's been a long time. Yeah, a lot lot has changed, that's for sure. Yes. Things look very, very different to how they... Yeah. (laughs) It kind of hasn't been a long time, but do you think because there's been so many changes, it literally feels like a lifetime ago? Yeah, Yeah. I think you're right. Like when you think about it, it hasn't even been a year and a half, but we are in such a different position than we were then. So for us, it's like, it's been 84 years. Like it's been forever. (laughs) (laughs) That's so cool. So just to sort of recap, when you guys were first on the podcast, you were just sort of starting out. I know you booked a lot of work through Facebook groups and stuff like that. And you're trying to find your feet. And um, very quickly, you scaled up to six figures, which was a huge milestone. And people are blown away by that. And then since then, you guys have just been keeping up that momentum, which a lot of people can't keep up that momentum. And um, I know you guys are parents and you're um, doing everything under the sun right now to to make the dreams work. And I want to dive in and sort of fill in the blanks between back then to today. Like before we dive into it, because I really want to talk about uh, branding and not just branding, but like building a brand that sort of stands out and is different to everybody else. And I know that you guys haven't been in business for a long time, but you've got a very established and um, very unique brand. So I'd like to start there and um, talk about the direction that you guys were thinking and um, how intentional was it for you to set up a brand that stood out from everybody else? So... Last time I was on the podcast, it was just me, obviously, because we had yeah, yeah. just started. And then when it all started getting really big and the business was going really well, it was really obvious that Elliot was going to have to get on board. Yeah. And that's what we wanted to do anyway. <laughs> we wanted to be offering like combined photo and film coverage for wedding couples. So it sort of got to the point where it was like, well, we're going to have to change our business name for starters because it was literally my name. And I was like, Poor fucking Elliot. (laughs) Like so rejected. So that was kind of the first thing that was like, all right, time for a rebrand. It's got to be both of us because we wanted to be um, booking weddings, photo and film pretty much every single time. We didn't really want to be doing just one or the other. We really, really wanted it to be like always both of us there so that both of us, like we were the brand. So that's when we came up. It actually wasn't as hard as we thought it was, but we came up with the brand, well, with the business name Lovers and Legends. So that's what we are now. We chose Lovers and Legends because we wanted to keep our brand kind of a bit alternative and a bit unique. So we, and we were always calling our couples lovers and legends in our like emails, in our um, social media posts and everything. So for us, it, it made sense. And when we changed it, a lot of our followers were like, yes, like they could totally see why we had gone in that direction. Yeah, definitely. I think, um, you know, previously when it was Steph Day's photography, we were sort of like, we hadn't been in the business map long and we were sort of learning stuff as we went. Um, And then going through all the branding and showing up as your true self we started to like shift our mindset. We were always in this mindset of when Steph was a teacher, as teacher aide and I was in the army, you know, every email we sent, we just, we, we'd try and make it as business, business, business. business. Yeah. Like, yeah. Business <laughs> like, like to whom this may have been yeah. served. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I feel like everyone starts like that. Yeah. yeah. And you're like, that's not how I talk. So every it was just time weird. No. it just made emails <laughs> yeah. to do, right? So when we came to Lovers and Ed- Legends, we are just like, we don't need to put on this like business, business, business type mentality because it's just going to be hard for us to do because that's not who we are. You know, we're all, we're professional, but we've got some attitude. We've got some personality and we like to show that across. And that's what's really made it easier for us to maintain a brand because we don't really have to work for it. But uh, it's definitely been one of the biggest changes that we did. Um, It's really cool that the name kind of, came about and it actually changed decisions that you made in the business going off the name and almost freed you up to be more of yourself. Totally. I love that. I don't think we could have come up with a better name. Like we're so happy with it. It's like 
everything our business and our brand is about is like in our name. So people just sort of know they're up for like a fun time, but we're also working with couples. And we were literally talking just the other day about how we met this photographer like months and months ago and we had been speaking online to them for a while. So like we knew them, but we hadn't seen them in person yet. And when she met us, she was like, oh, Oh my gosh, I was so nervous meeting you guys because I didn't know if you were going to be like the same in person as you are on the internet. And we were like, what? Like, why would we be different? That's so weird. And it only kind of occurred to us in that moment that like a lot of people have a big disconnection between how they Mm. are portraying themselves to their followers and to their clients and stuff versus how they actually are when like push comes to shove, when they're actually with them, they're like a totally different person. So I think when it comes to branding for us, something that builds trust, I guess, with our clients is that there is no difference. We are exactly who we come across as online. Like we're just as bubbly. We're just as fun, you know? So it's just like Elle said, like we're not trying to be anything we're not. So it's a good way to develop your branding in that way because that way you're not kind of like in disguise all the time. You're like, Ooh, what would they say? It's like, no, what would I say? Like, it just makes it so much easier. Yeah. It makes everything easy. It makes social media easy because you can just talk as you talk. Exactly. Your website, your copy, your messaging, everything. So with that name, it kind of evolved and it freed you up a little bit. And then from there, did it really affect your new branding and your new website and how people interact with you online as well? Yeah, Definitely. 100%. We had always, you know, tried to make things look really clean. And, you know, I think we originally started out with Squarespace as our, uh, you know, website designer, but it just was very limited, creative sort of way. It was probably more of like a, you know, a shop front type sort of uh, website. Totally. Designer. Yeah. It's like the design um, yeah. aspects was like, so limited yeah. whereas we there's not much you can do like, yeah do whatever we wanted which is why we would show it now so yeah when we made it show it it just freed us up to just go hey we want some edgy colors we want to have different size fonts we want to throw a lot of personality in there with our videos with the photos that we have in there and it just freed us up a hell of a lot we weren't constrained by what the typical corporate website sort of framework was we just you know we followed what you you preach in the business map about what should be on your homepage, all that. We we put all that information in and we had full creative freedom to just just go wild. And yeah, it's it's gone nuts for us. So. Yeah, you know, one thing that um I think is really important in business, and I was talking about this yesterday with my business partner is you need to have fun in your business and you need to want to be showing up. Like if you're not showing up as your true self or you're feeling disconnected with your name and your website and your branding and you're not feeling like you're proud of those things, it sometimes can be hard to show up as the best version of yourself because there's something holding you back. But when you do have all these things in line, it really does help you take things to another level because it's not, it's not like an anchor holding you back. Is it? And you can be completely creative because you're in a thrive mode instead of survive mode. Definitely. We felt like that when we had our rebrand, it was like, this is what we want to be. This, this, like, this is how we want to be portraying ourselves is the kind of work we want to be doing, the kind of clients we want to be attracting. And exactly like you said, it was just like, we were just like so passionate and excited. We were doing all these things and, you know, and everything was like going so well. And it's right because we just felt like everything was right. There was, it was exactly who we were. It's where we wanted to be. And it just put us in like the perfect position. Yeah. Yeah. That's so, so incredible. So tell me a little bit more about, um, I know that you, the name works really well because it's the way that you speak anyway. And it just sort of all came organically together, but I do want you to kind of explain to me more so like, uh, your thought process behind your clients, like what you were trying to portray to your clients and how far is too far or like how much you wanted to actually show and connect on a deeper level. Did you even think about all those things or were you just thinking like, hey man, let's just let's just do whatever? Well, on that, originally when we were like setting up our Instagram and our feed and all that sort of stuff, you know, we were limiting like our personal lives and the input that was in Instagram. but. Like since rebranding, we put more and more stuff of ourselves out there and that tends to be 
the stuff that gets the most traction at all. Totally. Like, oh, yeah. yeah. So I would say like our top, I don't know, let's say like top five, top 10 posts on social media we've ever made. It's of us. Yeah. It's always of us because people just want to connect. They do. And so, mm. yeah, like we used to sort of limit how much personal, you like limit how much the of good our personal stuff. life yeah. we share. <laughs> and we still do. It's not like we're sharing, like we're vlogging our days or anything. But we did find like the more we showed up authentically and let people in, the mm -hmm. more people connected with us. Yeah. And in the long run, that only builds trust between you and your couples as well, which means you get better work in the end because they're like nice and relaxed and not worried about anything. Yeah. And, and yeah. with that, we like, as much as we changed our language to suit, you know, who we are, we also changed how we spoke to be less of a speaking to the collective and more speaking to the individual. Mm -hmm. And together with all the other changes we did, it just like people feel like they know us before they've met us. And they've said that. I don't know, we get that all the time. <laughs> we'll like walk into a room or something and they'll be like, hey, guys. And then they'll realize that we've never, ever met them before. And they're like, oh, sorry. I just feel like I know you already. <laughs> yeah. That's so cool. I would love to actually just pull something out there for the listeners, like a little takeaway as well, because I know so many people, especially when I'm mentoring, people ask the question, like, how much should I show like my travel photos or behind the scenes photos or like photos of me doing things on my wedding account? Because I don't want to push away all my business. And, and then, you know, so we get stuck in that. But what people don't realize is like, you know, if every business is the same, then every business is the same. And what we really want to do and as creative entrepreneurs is people do business with you because it is you. And so because of that reason, people connect with you on a deeper level. And if you're pushing that away and you're not allowing those connections, you're not allowing someone a little insight or a little reason to connect with you, then there is no reason really besides maybe there's some beautiful imagery, but a lot of people can take beautiful images. So yeah, I think it's very, very important that um, in this day and age, it's not just the one perfect curated Instagram that just only shows people walking down the aisle. If you're a wedding photographer, I think there's so much more that we can share to really connect on a deeper level. Yeah, definitely. I think on that sort of point, I think, you know, uh, with a lot of like creative entrepreneurs, there is that imposter syndrome feeling that, we all get at the, as we start out. And I think we also revert to the thought of, oh, you know, showing myself isn't professional because for, say, an insurance company, showing yourself getting drunk at the pool isn't something you want to put on your, mm. your Instagram. <laughs> but for a creative entrepreneur where you're trying to sell you as a very personal experience to someone for their wedding, why, why wouldn't it's they totally want to know different. who you are? Yeah. It's completely You different. want to be yeah. unique. And, like, for us, we've been, like Elle said, we were making... Like we, we sort of talk to the individual rather than the collective now. We talk to the individual as the niche down individual. It's not like everyone. Like we've got a very specific kind of client avatar, people that we like working with. And really they end up just being pretty similar to us, which is good because like I don't know about other people, but I feel like it would be strange to want to work with people with like completely different views or personalities to you. Like that would be difficult. If you don't know who they are at all. Yeah, you're like, I don't know. We don't have anything in common. Well, here's the thing. Like people use their imagination a lot. And a lot of people in the creative industry, especially service based creative industry don't realize this, but if a couple, if you're a wedding photographer, if a couple came to you and onto your website and onto your social media, yes, they're looking at some great photos and they're imagining themselves in the photos, but they also look at you guys as the vendors, as the couples and imagine having you at their wedding day. And would that make their wedding day better or worse, more stressful or less stressful, uh, more fun, more enjoyable or less enjoyable, like more awkward or less awkward. So of course, they're the things that come up in their minds. And as I've surveyed so many people, I'd say like, is the most important thing, the best photos that you've ever seen or actually having a good time on the day. And more often than not, they say like, yeah, I love good photos and stuff. But if the person won't get back to me, if I don't really know who they are, then it's just lost. And for me, it's not what I'm prioritizing right now. Yeah, definitely. Steph's mom always tells us for her wedding photos, you know, 
they have beautiful photos, but she always has this memory that, that she didn't enjoy herself mm. with the photographer. And it's a like, horrible time. She ended up crying. And so now wow. whenever she thinks of her wedding, she's like, remembers this horrible experience. Yeah. And so that's actually something we think about all the time. We were just, we had a Zoom call with um, some clients that we just booked last night. And I said to them, I was like, it, exactly what you said, Jai, like, we feel like it's 50%. Yes, you want them, like you want us, for example, to be good at our jobs. You want us to be professional and do an amazing job. But you also want the other 50% to be, you actually just like the person. Yeah. Because for a lot of people, like their wedding day is the best day of their life. And so if you have yeah, these yeah. people like following you around, especially for photographers and videographers, because they're pretty much with you the entire time. If you're not like vibing with them, you are going to be so annoyed. <laughs> you're going to be like, get away from me. And you will, you'll remember how you felt because like the feelings resonate with you more so than just things that happen on the day. Yeah. Yeah. That's so cool. Talking more about brand and stuff. Can you tell me a little bit about your website? I have a couple of people asking a couple of questions in the discord group and they're saying like, Hey, ask them about the website. I know that you guys built it yourself. I know it's very creative and things like that, but I just want to hear a little bit about the creative process and the thoughts behind what you did. I'll leave this one to Steph because she built it. Yes. <laughs> I've spent yeah, like <laughs> tireless, tireless hours, hours on this website than I care to admit. <laughs> And it's always sort of like getting tweaked, which of course is good because like we're always evolving in some way. So we like to sort of keep it current with how we're running things at the time. But yeah, no, we did. I thought about it a lot. So I was like, okay, this is our business name, Lovers and Legends. What kind of feelings are we wanting to sort of evoke from people that go onto our website and look at it? We wanted to come across as fun, modern, edgy. And so I was thinking about, okay, what colors? So our main colors on the website is like a deep red, black, some whites, and then also some like bright oranges. So as soon as you go on, before you even read anything, it's like black background with like orange writing standing out and you already know how you're supposed to feel before you even read anything. And it yeah. does make a really big difference. I know like we've had lots of people ask about a website. I know I say that it's like, it's how you want people to feel like these things matter. The, the words you use, the colors you use, the imagery you use. And sometimes I feel like a broken record, but it seriously makes a massive difference. It really does. It's going to take like your website from being meh, it's just like everyone else to holy crap. That's amazing how the hell do these people do that? Or like, oh my God, I need mm. these people at my wedding because I just love their website. And we get that all the time, actually. Like our couples would be like, your website's amazing. And it's just another thing that draws them to us. So yeah, it was a very big, long, long-winded process to get the website to where it is now. But like you said, if your business is just the same as everyone else's, there's no reason for them to choose you. So that was always in the back of our minds and my mind when I was designing it. Uh, we definitely wanted it to look unique. We wanted it to stand out. We had a good chat last night with these clients on this Zoom chat. They said that they had inquired to 30 other photographers and out of all the things that they looked at, like they would open their emails, open their websites, and they would just like exit right out of it. It was like, you say Jai has like a seven, seven second seven, window. Seven. It seriously, like if you don't catch people's it really eyes, is. Yep. they're out because yep. there was 30 other photographers for them to message. And there's a hell of a lot more than that. If you do digging, mm -hmm. like every man and his dog wants to be a photographer these days. So I guess keeping that in mind that you do want to stand out but you want to stand out authentically. Like there's no point mm. being like, woo, I'm this crazy bitch. We're going to have a party at your wedding. And then like, and it's not actually yeah, you. And then you're actually <laughs> like, Oh, I'm an introvert. I'm I terrified. Drink. I don't dance. <laughs> so it yeah, is like so finding cool. a balance between being unique, but being yourself. Hey, I'd like to share um, with you guys when I first started the thing that really did blow up my business. This is like back in 2013. And you would think, that the internet wouldn't be that different to today's internet landscape, right? But it was 
dramatically different. I guess it's almost 10 years ago, but dramatically different. And wedding photographers weren't really famous on Instagram yet. So they didn't really know what else was out there. And so what I would do is I would look at people's websites and you should have seen how atrocious websites were. Like they were from 2005 and 2008 and like no one put any style into anything. Like no one wanted to spend money on their website. They're like, oh, no way would I spend a thousand bucks on my website or 2000. Like, you know, I'm just a photographer. And so one of the first things that I did is I had no money, but I just started like hustling every kind of job I could get. And then we designed a website from scratch. And then I contacted this developer and he gave me this big quote. It was $10,000 to like develop this thing. Cause this is before show it. Right. Yeah, yeah. Mm. And I was like, yeah, let's do it. Like obviously first year, I just didn't really have the money. So it was like a big stretch for me, but I honestly got to say, it's probably one of the things that blew up my business because everyone like straight away, people thought I was in business for longer. And it's one of the reasons why really? I hit six figures in the first 12 months. But, um, even up to today, people say like, oh man, like your website's amazing. I'm like, man, it's actually eight years old. It's yeah. <laughs> pretty yeah. crazy. But it's, um, I think when you put that much time and energy into something, you can really stand out and you can really create something completely different and yeah. book a lot of work. I think like the website's important. So many people like fuss about their social media and everything. And I get it because it's an amazing tool for business. It really is. And like, you can be as fun as you want on social media, but at the end of the day, people are only going to give you money and put their trust in you if they actually think you're a professional. And the easiest way to do that is a website. Like there's just, there's no way around it. You can't come across like, you know what you're doing without an awesome website. And like yours is 10 years old or whatever, and it's still kicking like if you put yeah. the work in and make it good, it can last a long yeah. time. Well, I'd also like to say a couple of things on this because um, remember when you first started and you hit 100K, right? You probably didn't have a website when you first started and then it probably wasn't that great. And a lot of us, we do that and we end up in this pool. But then what happens is after a while, you start going like, man, I'm running out of work. The business is not growing. I can't get to 200. And so you get into this like little lull spot. So I always say it's like, it's easy to get to hundred K with like a very average website, like whatever it is. But when you want to actually scale up and grow a business that consistently books all the time, like social media is like going to the party and you're having a big party of everybody. And then your website is like inviting the people from the party into a separate room and saying like, Hey, do you want to talk business? Like here it is. So I'm still the fun person, but like, if you want to be serious, like this is where it's at. And I honestly believe like, I don't know, maybe we can talk about your figures and numbers later, but like, I'd like to know from like, you know, building your website, doing a rebrand and stuff, like how much that actually helped you if you have gone past a hundred thousand per year. Yeah. Well, so pretty much we were charging pretty sort of entry level fees when we first started. So we, low. we were like, like all of like us, two, yeah. two to 3000 for both of us for the whole day, yeah. which is like crazy to we think We weren't of. really... Now. Kind of not really making any money at that point with yeah. how hard you have to work. But um, but we were obviously growing, and we knew that you know we are we going to do some. We obviously did the free wedding to start, but then knew that we were going to have to take some some hits until we were, were confident and able to produce for for our clients. But then once we did the rebrand, we put all the the pricing guide stuff into effect and actually had a very decent website, at least a good shell to start with. And we were able to up our prices by like three or four thousand dollars just from those changes. Yeah. And the first person we spoke to booked us, and it was just like it's amazing. And just rolled on from there because yeah, having like the professional and really like clean website pricing guide, all that stuff, it gives so much confidence to your clients. So much that there's no other way to really like up your business without being able to produce things that make people feel like, fuck yeah, like this is going to be good. Mm. I trust these guys. I mean, look at what they just gave me. How could this, like, how could they be crap after they just made this, you know? And like your work will speak for itself, obviously, but you've also got to have like the business part of it all happening in the background. Otherwise they just don't meet up and you'll never sort of like fill that space between them if you don't have both sides of it going. Yeah. And in terms of like where it's all got us in the numbers sort of side of the house, I think when you spoke to Steph the first time, you were like, oh, if Elliot hasn't quit, you haven't earned 150 in your first year, you know, I'll give you the business money back. 
And that's right. Okay. <laughs> I'll give you a refund. Oh, like, well, right. Yeah. Well, we didn't get a refund no. because we made it. <laughs> yeah. and, and then, um, and we fully booked out 2022. So, and we're over six figures for that too. So I think we were like 140 for this year, but that's, that's obviously just in bookings. We're still booking out 2023. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's hard to say, but we'll easily get like, 170 this year i'd say uh, depends which is but, amazing for like yeah, year two also, year three of business isn't and like it? we closed our 2022 bookings in like october last year or something yeah. and still every day we get people asking like 2022 can i can you guys do our wedding and we're like sorry we're just saying no 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 no, <laughs> no to everyone but it's crazy because we like not even that long ago probably like six to eight months ago we were sitting down and we're like oh my gosh imagine when we get to the point where we actually have to say no to people we're not at the point where we're like oh you want us let's do it let's do it like we'll take everything we can get we'll actually totally picking and choosing and then it happened and we were like what? what? And it happened so much (laughs) quicker than we thought it would it was just like mind blown yeah the problem is it's heartbreaking after a while because then you're always saying no. That's yeah. what it feels like. You're like, oh. oh, man, just like, no, no, no. There are some where it's like it's the ideal client. They vibe with us, but they're just on the wrong day. And it's yeah, just, like, oh. just can't do it. <laughs> you know, it's so devo. I'm like, oh. <laughs> yeah. it have to happen. <laughs> so there's three things that I'd like to point out that I love about you guys that I think is like really helped with your success because, you know, when you first started you sort of came and you were like ambitious about all this and you just wanted to go and hit the ground running. But one thing that you guys did is play the long game. So when you were saying before that you've just charged not much money and you're just trying to get as much work through the door and then you sort of built it up and then you, you put in time into a website and you put time in a business and you've built trust and desire and you, and you've blown the thing up. Like everyone that I know that has massive success, they all start like that, you know? So I never say like, never feel apologetic or guilty or anything for charging little dollars, especially when you first start out or shooting for free, like whatever it is, because that's just a success tax you got to pay to get yourself through that, get that confidence, get that portfolio. So you can work out what your brand name is going to be and all those things. So you guys have always played the long game and you're still playing the long game. So when I hear you talking, you're like, this is what we're doing now, but we're working towards this, you know? And so there's something in the horizon. So playing the long game like that helps so much because it allows you to get past short-term setbacks or smaller things that happen now and allows you to grow and expand and think so much further. Another thing that I love about you guys is you learn rapidly, but you implement the things that you learn. So, you know, so many, like I mentor so many people, let's say in the business map, and sometimes like, I'll be talking, talking, talking. And then I, you know, check the website and I do things. I'm like, Hey, you haven't done the things yet. But when people take action, it's like, Whoa, like you guys are taking action on everything. And you can see like how quickly things turn around and how much knowledge that you guys have. And that kind of like blows my mind as well. The third thing is, I forgot what the third thing is because I didn't write it down. Just make something up, Jay. (laughs) I am. I'm making all this up. (laughs) I was not prepared. (laughs) Oh, so good. So you guys jumped into the business map on year one and so many people hold themselves back and say like, oh no, I'm not ready until like year three before I do something like that. But you're on it before you even... (laughs) We get people asking us all the time, like, oh, how do you grow it so fast? And we always say like, it's actually annoying for us because we're like, we sound like we're just constantly plugging the business map, but we're like, (laughs) seriously, just get on the freaking business map. Like we're not just making this up like we went into this with no experience went into this business no experience and exactly what the business map is there for it's there to like help you to avoid making all those mistakes for freaking decades and just figure it out at the beginning so you can you know excel at the pace you want to instead of like always finding these roadblocks and everything and people always say like oh I don't have the money and like we understand money matters And we say, no, you can pay monthly, you can pay weekly, whatever. We're like, well, if you don't have the money, if you don't change something, yeah, we're like, never have the money. (laughs) To get the money, if you don't (laughs) learn, and we're we're saying like, this is the easiest way to do it. And you're right, some people, no matter how much you tell them advice or whatever, like you can't, you can lead a horse to water, you can't make it drink. It is like it comes down to like personal ambition, how serious you are 
about your dreams and your goals. You can say like, oh, I want to be a millionaire. But then if you just like sit at but home watching like Netflix, and, like yeah, exactly. you're not making money, <laughs> yeah. you know, go out and do something. <laughs> Oh man, that's so funny. But like, um, so you've got all the knowledge there. You've been learning all the things, but you guys actually implement the things. So like, I don't know if you guys know this, but I would say like you're in the minority in terms of like going out there and actually implementing all the things. And like, like you'll see a strategy and you're like literally putting it into the, you know, you're saying like the homepage of your website, like you're thinking about these things. So I think that makes a huge difference and it just shows how hungry you are for what you're doing and like how passionate you are as well. Yeah, I got to keep the buying baby food. So <laughs> got to put yeah. food on the table somehow. Yeah. So <laughs> I think people are afraid of like trying new things. Yeah. It makes them feel uncomfortable or if it doesn't work. Or if they look and silly. It's like, yeah. Yeah. Okay. But if you try it and then you don't like it, you don't have to keep doing it. Like you didn't sign your life away on a contract. Yeah. You can just stop doing that but you don't know until you try. It could be like the biggest game changer. And one of the things that made a huge difference for us was pretty much every time someone inquires, I just take a little video of myself on my phone, which I know you talk about all the Boom. time. And I just say, hey, like I'm Steph. Um, just thought I'd send you this video so that you knew who we were. Like this is Elliot. He's just working on some stuff. Like, thank you so much. Rah, rah, rah. And I cannot even tell you how many people have been like, thank you so much for that video. I've, I have inquired with so many people and you're the only person that did that. And it makes such a big difference and they book every time. But it's one of those things that like at first it's like, oh my gosh, like (laughs) new strategy sounds kind of scary. scary. I'm going to look like an idiot. But we tried it anyway and we... We pushed it on for a while until we found out whether it was working or whether it wasn't. And it was. So we've kept it going. But it is. Can I just quickly say, like, when people believe in you, so like when I say like people that believe in you, it's like your clients that are getting in touch, they've looked at your website, they've looked at your social, and they believe in you. It's like an injustice. If you don't show up like that and show that, give them the passion that they deserve. Like, that's how I see it. I'm like, man, you like imagine like they're so pumped about like booking you and then you reply with like to whom it may concern yeah like three days later and it's just the most underwhelming thing you could ever do and it's like oh man they don't even care why should i care if they don't even care yeah you know you don't you don't want your website to to grab them and then your response to be like fake compared to your website like lol jokes Uh this is is boring man you know yeah oh man yeah, no. And so like you guys just showing up with your passion, like it's so infectious, right? So like even me just being on the call with you, I'm like, I'm feeding off your energy. So of course someone is going like, thank you. This is a breath of fresh air. I've just got in touch with 30 other people and I've just got some very boring emails to whom it may concern. And then you guys are jumping out of your seats, ready for this work and ready to work with me. And I appreciate yeah, you. Yeah. That's a game changer. Just going back to branding and building a brand that really stands out. Do you guys really like when you've got your brand now and for every, all the listeners out there, a lot of people think a brand is just a logo or is just the name, but do you guys really do think about like the whole client experience, including like how you guys show up, you know, how early you show up before the wedding day, like what you guys wear, how you present yourself, how you deliver the images all the little things in between that's not just the initial inquiry and the initial bang on the website. Well, 100%. Yeah. It's literally everything from how we write to how we show up to what we wear to how we speak, everything. So you know, when we first started, you know, I, I always used to think, oh, I need to wear a button-up shirt to a wedding every time or I need to be looking, looking presentable and all this sort of stuff. But really what I like to wear is T-shirts, some chinos and my Doc Martens. Um, you know, I, I rock up like Perfect. that at a wedding and, you know, I'm not, I'm not in front of the camera, so people aren't going to see, uh, it's not see like me. it's going to be in their photos or anything. Yeah. So it doesn't make a difference, but it's what makes me comfortable. And if I'm comfortable, they're going to be comfortable as well. But then, you know, even like we've got little emojis that we always use and we're like, you know, we're, we're trying to, we're going to get our neon signs made up about with those so we're just doing everything from fonts you know what we wear literally everything so and like when we go to weddings um the way we interact with everyone so obviously your brand 
is not just there for your couples. It's there for your couples, friends and your couple yeah. family and everything. So we talk to everyone exactly the same way we talk to couples. And we always, always get like random guests from the wedding being like, what the hell? You guys are amazing. Or we even get <laughs> like, we've had a bunch of like um, bride and groom dads being like, damn, you guys are great, which we always think like they're like the hardest customers to please. <laughs> we're oh, like, totally. <laughs> we're thinking like they probably think we're just overcharging. Oh, like bloody photographers just taking photos and stuff. Yeah. And so when we get that, <laughs> it's like, fuck yes. Like for us, it's a massive flag saying you are doing the right thing. Like everything you are doing matters. Mm. Every time you speak to someone, the way you look at people, um, even during like the dancing at weddings, I am oh, dancing man. the entire time with my so camera. Sweet, yeah. Like we are so sweaty <laughs> and that comes right into our brand yeah. because that's what we're sort of convincing people we're like, and that's exactly what we deliver. Yeah. And then even when it comes like to getting their final packages in the mail and stuff, the branding, the colors, everything's still there. It's nice and personal, like a personal note. So it really is like all encompassing. You've got to have, like you say, all the aspects. It's not just a logo. Your brand is like, no, no, no. So <laughs> much more. Say, we are our brand. Well, yeah. It's not our logo. It's not our name. We are the brand. So it, every single thing we do and say represents our brand. It, it even comes down to actually drinking alcohol with with the, the bride and groom or with the family. If they buy you, offer to buy you a drink. Why wouldn't you have a drink with them? Like you're there on their special day. Mm. You're having a good time with them. It just seems silly to to not be yourself and, and, and show up that way. And that's, that's part of the branding as well. So, Love it. Hey, are you guys on uh, TikTok? We have... We have <laughs> we have a TikTok. It's pretty crap. Yeah, we, we haven't put much time into it. We, I think we use it sometimes just to make videos for real. So it's sort yeah. Of- yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what's interesting? It's like you guys are already like it's kind of a weird stage of business because it's like, oh, I got all these ideas for marketing and all this fun stuff. But then it's like, oh, but I, I can't take on any more clients. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it's, yeah. it's kind of like a weird thing i'm sort of you know i'm there all the time and it feels weird i'm like i want to go and do some marketing but hey, man i don't even i don't need any more yeah. clients yeah. <laughs> I was thinking, like the other day because like at the beginning uh the end of last year we turned off our facebook ads because they were going too well yeah, yeah. we were like we literally can't take any like, more whoops. people yeah, was and i was just thinking yeah. the other day i was like oh maybe i should turn our facebook ads back on and then i was like why we're saying no to people every single day yeah i know it's weird hey well i do think um i'd actually like to ask you guys like what you your unrealistic goals for the next time you're on the podcast one year from now which would be really cool because we can record this and we can listen to it and then um in a year's time we could go back and see if you hit those unrealistic goals but i do think just moving forward i actually believe you guys would do really well on tiktok and i think even if you've got no audience on there, like I actually think it would be just a fun place for you guys to express a little bit more. And going forward, like I believe like Instagram is good, but it's, it's you know, the younger generation won't be using it like we're using it. So um, to sort of future-proof yourself, I reckon an audience there would be your jam. I can get around yeah. it. <laughs> I can get around it. My stories on Instagram are like basically TikToks already. Let's be real. <laughs> totally, totally. Yeah. Um, and the thing is, like, once you make something on, on TikTok, you can just literally download it and then post it on Instagram. So yeah. you can still just use the same content, but then at least you're on that platform. And I think you'll, I think you guys will get a lot of traction, you know? Yeah. No, it's definitely something we've spoken about. We just, um... yeah, I've got a list of things we could get on. It. <laughs> yeah, we literally have been like compiling lists like, this will be a good video, this will be a good reel, good TikTok. And we just totally. haven't done them yeah. because, I don't know, we're slack. <laughs> yeah. So tell me, what's your unrealistic goals for the next uh, 12 months? If you're dreaming and in 12 months' time, your future self is going to be listening to this right now. And um, are you going to be disappointed on yourself that you didn't think big enough or are you going to be shocked at yourself that you're thinking too big? <laughs> uh, we, we had a talk not too long ago about where we want our pricing to be and where we want our annual income to be. And in terms of it's like this year we're fully booked, but we could be at the point where we're almost too booked. But yeah, I think mm-hmm. I think we overbooked ourselves. We're kind of freaking out. Yeah. Too much work on. But we want to get to a point where we can 
do about 30 weddings a year. Tops. And, and then, yeah. and then no more. And, st- and make 270 a year. Yeah. Nice. That's our goal. So that'll be about $9,000 a package, basically. That's what we're, that's our, our. That's your unrealistic goal oh, for yes. now. Yes, which is so scary to say. I love it. Yeah, but it, is, it is really scary. I love we it. We like, like. Oh, you guys will smash we it. We were supposed to, <laughs> I mean, you know, we were supposed to have this podcast episode like a couple months ago, but like the burnout was real. Yeah, yeah. Like we're working oh, yeah. so hard on the films and the photos and everything. And like the amount that we were, we raised them now, but the amount that we were charging just didn't align with how hard we were working. So the the whole point of our goals is that like we want to be working less and gaining and getting paid more for it. from it so that we feel like yeah, yeah. it's actually worth all of our yeah. time. But I also want to be able to put more effort into our couples. Like yeah, each couple have, gets yeah. like more of our time because yeah. now we're like we're spreading ourselves so thin sometimes that it's like, ugh. It feels impossible. These are these are all uh, like growing pains though, and they're all really they're really important because it's not something you'll learn in the business map or anywhere else. It's something that you literally have to do yourself and go, oh yeah. And I do it as well. Like I have mentors, and they tell me what to do. Like Jai, you should slow down and do it like this and this. And I'm like, nah, man, you just need to go hard out. And then after a while, I'm like, oh, oh right. Like, <laughs> send help. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why didn't I increase my prices and yeah. do all these things? You know, like. But that's we we need to go through it because it is the experience that we need. And I definitely had quite a few years. I actually didn't learn as fast as you guys learned because I was just like, I couldn't say no. Like I was like, oh no, next year I only do 30, but then I'll get another inquiry. And I'd be like, well, that's another like five, six thousand yeah. dollars. I could just do it. And I'm like, yeah, stuff it, I'll do it. Then after a while, it was like 60 weddings a year. And I'm like, oh, oh damn, like yeah, brutal. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Do you guys have any other metrics of ways of, um, you know, sort of tracking your goals and, and what you want to say to yourself in the future there? Well, I, I think we've we've had a fairly steady sort of like Instagram growing and we've been giving us three months sort of goals, which we've been hitting pretty regularly. I think our last one was 1,500 followers on Instagram and we hit that. Did we hit that? Yeah, I don't think we made them unrealistic enough because we hit them all and yeah. they were yeah, supposed yeah, yeah. to be unrealistic yeah. and we were like, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, we do have, like, 90-day goals and things. We need to refresh them for this awesome. year, for 2022. Um, yeah. But we do, we want to grow our Instagram following. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think, honestly, just just a pluck of a number at, at this point would probably be about 5,000 by, like, April sort of time yeah cool yeah lots of yeah lots of work to do (laughs) yeah steph's face is like oh my god you know that's me on instagram (laughs) (laughs) it's unrealistic you know oh like hey sometimes you can be unrealistic sometimes it can be overwhelming hey like my Uh, business partner actually had a bit of a chat with me um about my clothing line mm. just yesterday and he's like oh so what i want to do is we we need to be posting a reel a day photo a day, do a campaign a week, like campaign a month, like this shoot, that shoot. And I was like, man, if I had a team of 10 people, we still couldn't pull that off. Like, yeah. like that yeah. is so much stuff. Like yeah. we'll yeah. never be able to do that, you know? So yeah, sometimes we can like dream big, especially in January. And then after a while it sort of comes back to like, oh man, like yeah. is, is the pain worth it? <laughs> but I mean, that's the point of like making unrealistic goals. Cause like I said, of course. How, like we didn't make them unrealistic enough and so we could see like we're tallying how many things we're booking and how much money or whatever Mm. and we can see like oh yeah we're gonna hit that easily and it literally stopped us from working so hard because we were like oh we don't even have to hustle because we're gonna do it it's already there and so that's the point it's like you're supposed to make them huge so you do push yourself but then of course there's the other side of it where you're like, okay, we're only human, like settle down. Well, look, I, I tell you what, like there's not one successful person that I've ever met that's like regrets setting big goals. And every year I set like goals that I'm like, man, it's way too unrealistic. It's crazy. And every year I'm like disappointed in myself that I set such a small goal. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. at the start of the year, I'm like, this is huge. Yeah. And then at the end of the year, I was like, man, what was I thinking? Like, I wish I'd, Damn it, yeah. you know, so yeah. every single time. And my regret always is I'm always thinking too small. Yeah. Always. I think it's a nice reminder, though, like when you do hit them, it reminds you that you're capable of more than you think. You yeah. really are. You're always oh, like yeah. selling yourself short, but you can pretty much do anything you put your mind to if you work hard enough. 
Yeah, we like protect ourselves. Hey, it's like yeah. protecting ourselves from disappointment. So exactly. we might like, as well create worst. small goals and then just play really yeah. small and not be, ever be disappointed. Yeah, that doesn't sound like a life I want to live. No, thanks. <laughs> cool, guys. I'm going to wrap it up there. I really appreciate you being back on the podcast and welcome, Elliot, because it's your first time. And I would love to get you guys on the podcast again in a year's time. And I know, like, this is just fun for me. Like, I know so many people will be so keen to jump in and just hear your mindset and and what happened with your goals and everything like that in in a year. Yeah, sounds good. sounds good. Thank you so much for having us on again, Joe. Of course. Hey, um, just to sort of finish off, can you tell me where I can find you guys and um, your website as well? Because I know a lot of people want to jump over and have a look. Yes. If you want to find us, you can find us on Instagram at Lovers and Legends. And our website is just loversandlegends.com. So it's super easy to remember. And also, don't forget, guys, they're trying to get 5,000 oh, yeah. followers. Yeah, so if yeah. you just want to get over TikTok, there and make sure you hit the follow. Our TikTok's blowing up, didn't you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we've got like 20 followers or something. So uh, TikTok at Lovers and Legends. Get over there. <laughs> I love it. I really appreciate you guys and I'll see you soon. All right. All right. Cheers, see ya. Guys.